Hi guys and welcome back to Parcel Move. And for today's episode, it's just an intro. So we don't have a game for you here today, but we do have uh, our new team, of course, a new save, and uh, we have a lot of uh, things to update you on in terms of what's going on. We want to introduce you to the club, uh, talk about their history and uh, everything that's been going on. So um, I guess you could call it a bit of a transfer special, but of course it's still 21st of August, so there's still things that can happen. And in the next episode, we will have the first game of the season for you. Now, just a quick announcement. I did mention in the last episode, or the last save rather, uh, in the last episode of my last save in the Brave Braga series, I did mention that if anyone would like to make any uh, an intro for my new team uh, and maybe even a thumbnail um, picture I guess if you want to call it thumbnail for my videos that would also be great so now I'm introducing the team and you'll get to know more about them and that way if anyone feels you know up for it then that'd be great basically <laughs> we want to com create a community feeling of course so if we can get people involved otherwise I'll have to just make a thumbnail myself of course but yeah it'd be great if we could see if some people send in some stuff so if you do feel uh, like you'd like to volunteer that then please do of course send it to my email which you can find quite easily uh, on my YouTube channel of course uh, and that's pretty much it so let's just get into it so we are going to manage Valencia in our new save it's a very interesting club of course everyone knows about Valencia they're a very historical team and uh, let's have a look at the history so just in general though at first we can have a look at the profile so, so obviously in La Liga in Spain the year 1919 was when it's founded professional worldwide reputation of course and it's rich in finances apparently but we'll get into that in just a second uh, of course they're also a team who haven't been relegated in recent history up until 1995 kind of an up down team so we want to you know try and stabilize that they kind of did this in this little period here but then of course as you, everyone knows they performed very poorly in the, the year 2015-16 and even 16-17 didn't perform too well in real life but of course we're actually playing 16-17 in the game uh, so they did it end in 12th and uh, we're gonna try and make them you know consistent Champions League performance if not uh, you know ahead of that but first of course we have to get the team back into Europa League and that's exactly the expectations from the board as well so uh, in terms of the general bits first of all let's have actually a quick look the captains Diego Alves our goalkeeper we'll look more into the players later on but our vice captains uh, the Tunisian Ayman Abidin Abdinor Abdinor and uh, key players uh, Mangala apparently uh, the loney from Manchester City French uh, star I guess if you want to call them. the stadium we're going to be playing in is Mistela in uh, Valencia of course and uh, the capacity is 52k so uh, Valencia are one of the teams who have uh, one of the highest not see I don't want to say season ticket holders but they uh, rep direct their reputation is really high and so they have a lot of people who come and see their games so that money will be very useful for us of course because that means the club can generate their own money through you know fans coming to the stadium and whatnot and 56k is nothing to, you know not too small compared to other stadiums so you can go, definitely go higher um, uh, but that will come in due time so these are some of the icons they have Rafa Benitez nonetheless as well everyone knows him became famous through his management of Valencia David Villa, of course, one of the stars as well, who's now playing in New York City. Um, was that New York City? Yeah, it was. Uh, and let's see who else. Okay, no one I really need, uh, recognize other than Claudio Ranieri, but everyone knows him, of course, a famous Italian manager who helped Leicester City win their first Premier League title. So... Uh, that's in terms of the icons and legends as well. You can have a little look, look over here. The owner is actually Peter Lim, if I'm not mistaken, in real life. Uh, he apparently bought Valencia over, and that's why Gary Neville was in charge of them temporarily. Uh, of course, he did, that didn't end too well for him. But um, yeah, he's a very rich owner, of course. He is, he's a billionaire, I think, if I'm not mistaken. He's helped Salford as well with the Class 92 project for that team. Uh, and basically he just got a ton of money and he refused to sell Valencia who've got a huge amount of debt so it looks like he's got a very uh, long-term plan for them and hopefully we'll be a part of that as well so rivals of course are Madrid as everyone knows Levante are actually the local ones Madrid, Barcelona, Vill Villarreal, Sevilla and Castellon are uh, I guess you could say compet well it actually says here Madrid, Barcelona and Villarreal are the competitive ones as well Sevilla, Levante and uh, I think Levante are the only ones who are historical because if I'm not mistaken, they also play 
in the city of Valencia, there you go. Uh, so it's a bit of a derby, I suppose, but for some reason they don't consider it as one. Uh, we've got about 36k season ticket holders, so that's good to see out of the 56k in the stands. Uh, and in terms of facilities, we're doing quite, oh, it's not 56k, it's 52k. Uh, overall, though, uh, in terms of facilities, we're doing quite well. The st stadium's owned by the club, so that's good. Uh, and we've got you know all the general stuff but in terms of the actual facilities corporate facilities don't matter too much for me as a manager i suppose but training facilities and youth facilities are above the good level which is good to see impressive and great we can definitely improve on that and we'll be asking for that later on there's also a planned move to 75k stadium uh there was a bit of confusion about whether this is gonna happen in real life or not but i think because um Valencia at the time when the you know the FM17 was made uh, is that it was still you know going on it was still gonna happen this move but in real life I think there's a bit of confusion there's no real date set but at least there's a date set here so we just have to wait a couple years time we'll have a new stadium to move into and so I don't really have to ask the board for that junior co coaching and youth recruitment are uh, at a decent level I think they could be better off especially considering because Valencia are well known for their youth graduates they have a bunch of players like Jordi Alba who plays for Barcelona now uh, and uh, some other players as well Juan Mat has come through their system too I think as well, so, um, actually let's have a look at where I'm at, I think, was it Madrid, or was it Valencia, either way Valencia are known for their youth, so, uh, you know, we'll be hoping to do that as well, so I actually did come through Madrid, Valencia is where he became famous, and then he moved on to Chelsea, and then after to Manchester United, but point is, uh, Valencia do contribute to youth development and that's exactly what I want to do in this save as well. In terms of affiliates, we do have a Valencia B side who are in the Spanish second division B3. So they're not in this, you know, it goes a while up basically. So you get promoted from here into, where was it? Yeah, you get into, okay, it doesn't want to show for some reason, where are we? Hmm, it's a bit unusual. I just want to see this before. Point is, uh, they're not. They're a couple levels down, is my is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, second division. It goes La Liga, second division. I think there's even a third division. But either way, we'll, we'll learn more as we go as well. Uh, and that's kind of it in terms of history. Though we have won a Spanish first division six times, but the last time was in 2004. And there seems to be quite a bit of gap between each, you know, every time that we won the league title. So we want to make that consistent as well. We've been Europa League winners as well as European Cup winners cup. Uh, this is a Europa League 2004 as well. So that was a nice little double for Valencia back there. But since then, they've been on a bit of a downfall, I suppose you could say. A huge one. A shock of, shock of a one, basically. I think you can say... Uh, not as bad as Chelsea's, but not as okay-ish as United's either. But there is a heavy decline and they'll need some rebuilding as both clubs did as well. So Spanish Cups are on seven. But yeah, we'll have a huge task to overthrow the likes of Madrid and Barcelona. And of course, there is a kind of a newcomers in Atletico Madrid if they can keep up their challenge. Um, and they have some financial issues to deal with as well. And the likes of Sevilla have a decent chance too. We're predicted by the media to end in fifth spot, which would give us Europa League football, which uh, would meet expectations, of course. Uh, and I would say that's a fair enough assumption, but we'll, be, we'll have to fight off well against the likes of Sevilla, Atletico Bilbao, Villarreal, and I think... I'm a bit surprised to see Vigo and Granada this low, but I think we'll have to fight against them if we want to perform that, you know, to actually reach that spot as well. Who knows, maybe we can sneak into fourth ahead of Sevilla and get into Champions League football. That would save us a ton of money as well. Um, so in terms of the schedule, we played a bunch of friendlies. Uh, against Arsenal, we lost 2-0. Boca, we beat 5-1 convincingly. Chelsea was a very tight loss, 3-2. Of course, friendlies don't mean too much, uh, but it's nice to see that we're picking up a couple of greens here. Uh, not too nice to see us draw against Anderlecht, but you can understand that as we were away from home. I did manage to get a tour set because uh, we had these affiliate clubs that we had to play against. and It was a bit of a mixed match between going away from home and playing at home as well. But anyways... Um, our first, first game is against Atletico Pamplona, I think, who just, uh, you know, La Liga newcomers, basically. And, um, how did they get promoted to 
the, sixth, the first division playing region six. They must have done really well in the playoffs. But either way, it should mean that we should do quite well. Um, in terms of competitions, as I mentioned, qualify for Europa League and the Spanish Cup. They just want us to reach the quarterfinals. We don't have any Europa League football or Champions League football, so we'll have plenty of time to rest between our fixtures, uh, and hopefully that will set us up well during the season. Uh, in terms of our under 19s, we do have some youth stars to look forward to. I'll include the B team as well. Um, some players uh, are out on loan, but when they do come back, hopefully the likes of Piatti can play well if he still decides to stay on. We've got Santimina, who we sent out on loan ourselves. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. And um, uh, we'll explain that in more detail as well. But yeah, as you can see, a couple of players who, when they do come back from loan, should do quite well for us. Uh, but in terms of potential ability as well, we've got the likes of Tony, Tony Lato, uh, Carlos Soler, Villa, Villalba, you know, all of these players from here up until about here, at least these group of players, uh, just about nine of them, should slot into our side quite easily as well. So hopefully that will happen too. Um, in terms of um, our tactics, we do have a bit of an interesting tactic going. So normally... I think a lot of clubs around Europe play the 4-2-3-1, um, but I'm not too much of a fan of their the, how, ex how easily exposed you are on the counter-attack when you do play the 4-2-3-1. So I've decided to try and go with something really new. I've never tried this at all. Uh, we'll be playing with two defensive midfielders in the 4-2-3-1 instead. That way we're not exposed on the counter-attack. And in terms of tactics itself, we've got a mentality set on standard to see how other teams perform. We've got counter, we've also got attacking as well, so we can really push on if we wanted to. Uh, but yeah, this is the main one we'll be going for and then we can build on from that as well. In terms of team shape, I never play very fluid, it's very, uh, it could obviously backfire. I'm normally a structured type of manager, but I'll try very fluid to see how it goes. And the reason is because we're switching the tactics up. I normally don't try this out and I want to do that now. What I want to do, the plan is to play a higher tempo of football. Just quick short passes is basically what I'm going for. And I've added a couple of instructions I would like to see as well, like closing my pl closing opposition players down. I don't really like how, uh, when you have on sometimes, players uh, don't, I don't think they naturally close teams down well enough. Uh, but well, because they're set on sometimes, of course, but it just it kind of just makes sense to close them down. We also don't have any players who naturally close the uh, opposition down properly so it makes more sense for us to actually include that as well we're also going to be playing narrow that way you know the team is close to each other so they can make quick short passes easier they'll have options and supported players all the time and that way they won't have to think too long about uh, making some passes now normally i'm not too much of a fan of playing the dribble less instruction but the reason i got it is because i want a pass first instruct instruction you know i want that pass first mentality rather if we're, playing, if we're playing quick short passes, I don't want my players to take the ball and decide to dribble because that kind of cuts off the tempo a little bit because, you know, they're not passing. They're not playing at a quick tempo. They've kept the ball a bit, which means they're keeping possession and they're trying to dribble. Um, so we're trying to see the dribble less instruction and it's mainly because we've got wingers in our side uh, and their instructions are always to dribble more. So if you dribble less a bit, that kind of counteracts it and that way it's a bit of a middle ground where sometimes they'll dribble, sometimes they won't. We've also got um, the likes of the roaming playmaker who will dribble more as well. He roams from his, from his position so it makes sense not to um, include uh, a roam from positions instruction which is what I normally like. The deep line playmaker will hold his position and because we're playing two defensive midfielders we don't have to necessarily have someone who's defending and someone who's on support. Uh, they both start quite deep so if to have one of them on defend I've found out as well through the friendlies. I initially saw that instruction uh, or that advice rather on the community uh, for the Sega community I think it was for FM17. Uh, but I didn't think it was too true. I thought it was a bit weird to play two players on support duty and someone on attack. And so, uh, you know, but I found out that they were right as it is because you've got two defensive midfielders. You kind of have to fill up the space here. So these are the gaps that teams can exploit. But hopefully two defensive midfielders can account for that. And especially because both of them are support duty. Um, we've got ball playing midfielder, ball playing defender rather in Mangala. Hopefully he'll bring the ball out quite well to Perez. Uh, Abid, Abid Abdinor as well as a, he's just a defensive centre back. So hopefully we'll bring in more technical uh, or more, you know, play centre backs who are able on the ball as the game goes on. But these are tactics tactics we're going to be going for, and hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of nice, fast uh, attacking football from our side and. Uh, let's hope this tactic doesn't backfire really. Uh, in terms of the team reports, so 
I think these are mainly from the friendlies, but there appears to be a couple of depth issues. Um, but yeah, we can't really address that because of our finances, and I'll talk about that more in just a second. In terms of stuff, I brought in a lot of new stuff. Thankfully, now we're the best in Spanish division in La Liga, really, in uh, the attacking coaching, mentality coaching, tactical coaching, and man management. So it's really good to see. We've got the best scouting system as well, perfect for us, and the best physios too. So we really did improve in the staff department. In terms of training, we're keeping it quite simple, playing a balanced, uh, you know, well, not playing, but well, training our players in a you know to have a balanced approach kind of thing so that they're working on attacking and defending and everything else in between the intensity levels on average now is on high during pre-season but now we're playing of course so we have to kind of lower that match tactics until we find uh, until our scouts tell us otherwise such as this game against you know the first game of the season we we're going on attacking movement after our scouts recommended it Scouting, we've got our scouts pretty much everywhere where it counts. So uh, we've got Central Europe quite covered because that's where our club is. We've also got the likes of North America, South America covered, uh, the rest of Europe as well, Scandinavia and UK and Ireland. Uh, I think we've also got East Asia covered too. We've also scouted competitions like the Europa League, Champions League, as well as the Sp um, Spanish under-19s and the La Liga First Division. Well, not, not the La Liga First Division, but just the La Liga competition uh, to see if we can snap any deals from other players and other teams. Um, that's kind of it. In terms of transfers, we can look at that now. So transfer history, we bought in two players, Guilherme, the attacking midfielder, as we don't have any players in that spot, so it's really important to invest in him. He's only a loanee as well because we don't have the necessary money to bring them in. Also bring in Donati, the right back, because we needed some comp uh, some uh, backup option, I suppose, for our other right back, who we'll talk about more in just a second. We actually haven't had a look at the squad, and that's kind of my mistake. We'll have a look at the finances, and then we'll have a look at the squad. Um... And yeah, in terms of outs, we've got Solar, the, the highly rated uh, you know, central midfielder who can slot in quite easy in deep line playmaker position here. Hopefully when he comes back, he'll be ready. Um, but he, is gone, he has gone on loan to Velasano B team. And that's because uh, they were good enough, basically. And he's already played the league game for them, so it's good to see. Santimino was our decision. He's gone to Sporting Gion or Gijon, I think. I can't really remember how they say it. But he's their La Liga team, the point is. And they've also got some decent training facilities i think they're even better than us to be honest in terms of the training facilities so that means they should be uh, they should help uh, mina develop into a proper striker for us when he comes back and he should slot in quite easily as well as in a deep line forward role um yeah it's disappointing to let my own loan but unfortunately we just have too many numbers there so that's all the transfer business we've done so far we still do want to bring in some players and we'll talk more about that in just a second uh but yeah finances are really bad so apparently we're gonna <laughs> we're not gonna we're gonna miss or fail the Europa Champions Cup FFP uh, rules uh, financial fair play of course and I, I don't know why this is even up because we're not in the Champions League but point is we've got 48 million in the bank and our projection doesn't look good our balance is going to continuously go downwards and for some reason this transfer budget remains the same but it's only on 2.3 million which isn't good to see turnover increases temporarily but goes down it's kind of like everything just drops uh, but hopefully we can deal with that and I think most of that's got to do with the debts. So we've got 224 million in debt uh, remaining 195. It was initially 224 of course uh, and we have to pay 7 million per month. And that's a bit hefty but once that's out of our way, which is in the year 2029, uh, hopefully you know we'll be okay. I think uh, with Peter Lim as our board, you know, he should help us out basically and, uh, and that's maybe one of the reasons why we're considered rich also could be just because we have 48 million in the bank either way we'll have to deal with financial issues just like we did against uh, when we were managing Braga but hopefully we can do better this time around with Valencia um, and I think that's pretty much it so let's introduce you to the squad so we've got a 4-2-3-1 which means we need like I always mentioned I need like a squad of 22 uh, players, uh, two players per position. So we've got two goalkeepers, one of Diego Alves, the former, uh, of course, he's always been a Valencia actually, but he's a former Almeria. I think I was thinking about someone else as a goalkeeper, the one who plays for AC Milan. Does he still play for AC Milan now? I forgot what he's called. But anyways, we've got really good goalkeepers, my point. Um, you know, uh, he's a good player for most La Liga sides. And I think maybe we might have, let's have a look if we have a better judgment of ability in my staff now. Thomas Albach, our youth development head of youth development where is he all right so anyways either way Diego Alves is still a leading goalkeeper we've also got uh this player who I'm not gonna attempt to say Huame I think 
uh, but he's a quality player as well apparently decent player from us La Liga side so it's good to see we, br we brought in Doniti because Montoya needed some backup again Montoya needs a little bit of improvement on, uh, in the right back spot as well also the left back we're quite set with Gaia but uh, uh, Squira will be there to help us a little bit but he does have problems with injuries another low knee as well we've got quite a couple of low knees we've got four centre backs as well Garay and Ayman are our main centre backs Mangala and Santos should prove adequate uh, rotational options but we will definitely need to improve in that area of the pitch as well once we do have the finances. So we've only got one ball playing defender which is quite disappointing which means when I do have to switch around players I'll have to um, you know switch around the tactics as well. In terms of central midfielders we've got Suarez, Perez, Perejo and Medran all in the defensive midfielder positions. A lot of them are quite comfortable with it I think it's just Medran who needs to be retrained as a defensive midfielder and he'll slowly be able to do that. Um, but yeah, the main ones are Perez and Perejo, who should do quite well. Uh, Enzo, I think, is quite comfortable being a roaming playmaker in defensive midfield. And he's got all the stats and attributes for it, so it's perfect to see. Shoots from distance, argues with officials, dies in tackles, and runs with ball often is all quite good for us as a roaming playmaker. Now, Nani and Bacali, Rodrigo, and... Where's he gone? Cancelo, or Cancelo, I think, is it? Either way, they are our wingers, so we got, he's actually supposed to be a right back, but I'm not comfortable with his positioning, marking or tackling, so it makes a far more sense to play him as a winger, because he does get forward whenever possible, he runs with the ball down the right, all the t he, he has all the attributes and player traits of a winger, so it just made more sense to play him there, and he looks far more effective in that role, so that's where we'll be playing him with. Initially, Nani was our other left winger first choice, now he's either footed, and he does cut inside from both wings, but I feel like if he plays him inside forward, his decision making and composure is just not good enough so it makes far more sense to play him as a winger which he's more comfortable apparently playing uh, and the reason why we need another left winger is actually because Nani got injured in pre-season for five to six months so hopefully he can recover from that and uh, you know still be a good player we did I mean I didn't spend the money on him but Valencia did just buy him this season for 7.25 million so it's got a lot to prove after moving on for Fernabache if he can still do it at the you know one of the higher leagues I suppose uh, but yeah, we've got nice little backups in Bakali, who's going to be playing on the right because he's right foot and we're playing with wingers. He's quite comfortable as an inside forward, but we'll play him as a winger instead, where he can do a little bit better, I think. Rodrigo's left foot, so it makes more sense to play him as a left winger. I think he can quite comfortably play as a deep line forward as well, if need be, but we're going to be playing him as a winger anyways because he's quite uh, capable in that role. Got plenty of pace, physicalities are good. Uh, technicals are good as well and so we'll train him in that regard as well um, and I think that's pretty much us in terms of wingers so Guillermo still needs a backup which is what we're looking for we're also looking to bring in we were initially only looking for another attacking midfielder because we've got the rest of the squad sorted but now with Nani injured we have to look to bring someone in until January time in the left wing position so hopefully we can find someone quite cheap uh, but yeah, we've got two strikers in Zaza and Munir who are both here and unfortunately I can't terminate either of their loans which is why we had to send out Sentimina out on loan instead and so hopefully the Italian as well as the Spanish player Munir, a youngster well known from uh, Barcelona can do the job for us until we actually get our striker back as well. So some de it's a decent squad overall, some areas need some improvement uh, but up until we have the money I can't complain too much and at least we do have the numbers uh, or we had the numbers until Nani got injured and uh, I think we had some decent money enough for a, a attacking midfielder but yeah this is how our budget looks I, of course I can push it all the way to 8 million but again you know we'll be spending less than our budget uh, and as well if I do it this way it would be way over budget so I like to just keep it in the middle but just favouring the um, you know, transfer budget a little bit so this is how it looks and uh, we don't have too much money to go with so I think that's kind of everything that I wanted to introduce you guys to the club Valencia are a great club with a ton of history so it'll be interesting to see whether we can turn around their recent history and uh, do well for them um, but yeah we just have a huge task at hand uh, against the likes of Barcelona and Madrid and both Madrid clubs and of course Sevilla who are proving quite competitive uh, as well um, but yeah, I think that's kind of it, uh, and I think that will be all for our intro episode. We will be showing you, of course, the first game of the season against Pamplona, uh, and it will be a very interesting game. And uh, like I mentioned, we won't be going with the a whole five games, you know, showing you an episode every five games rule. I think we won't be doing that anymore. We'll kind of be 
deciding which games are important and which aren't and just showing you those ones, the important ones of course. Uh, and it won't always be against the likes of Madrid and Barcelona, it'll be more about where we are in the table and how we're doing in cup competitions as well. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So again, if you do feel like you'd like to volunteer your ability or your skill in creating an intro, vid an intro for our videos, um, you know, whenever we play with this Valencia save, that'd be great to see. Obviously something relevant to Valencia, something historically relevant as well. And uh, that would be lovely to see. Otherwise, I'll just have to try and do these things myself. I did do it for the Braga. I didn't do an intro because I can't really, I'm not that good at editing or anything. Um, but I did, of course, do the thumbnail, but I'd love to see someone else's artwork and that. Uh, and obviously, you know, you'll get a shout out on that business, but I can't actually pay anyone, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, which is why I'm saying volunteer, but otherwise, if you're unhappy with that, that's completely fine and understandable. Um, and yeah, and a thumbnail would be lovely too, but until then, I think I'll be creating my own until... Uh, if anyone decides to send it in. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all. So again, uh, we'll be back for the first game of the season uh, in tomorrow's episode. And hopefully it is a curtain raiser. So yeah, I think it'll be all for today's episode. So if you did enjoy it, then of course, please do hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2017 content. And as always, guys, thank you all very much for watching.